Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I hope you know me from the Brian Kilmeade Syndicated Radio Show or from Fox and Friends on Fox News Channel, where I co-host that show. Now, I cannot wait to be a part of Strange Heartland History, 1903, Van Buren, Arkansas. 13-year-old Bob Burns is hanging out in Heyman's Plumbing Shop when he picks up a length of gas pipe and blows into it. Being a trombone and cornet player in the local Queen City Silver Comet Band, he notices it makes an unusual sound. So he continues to tinker with it. Ultimately, he combines the two pieces of gas pipe with a whiskey funnel to create this, an odd-shaped instrument that's basically a trombone slide whistle hybrid. What does he decide to call it, you ask? A bazooka, from the now obsolete slang word bazoo, meaning mouth. Over the next 15 years, Burns plays the crap out of this thing, even bringing it with him to Europe when he enlists in the Marines during World War I. His talent impresses everyone, including General John Pershing. And he joins the military corps jazz band, touring the continent and entertaining thousands of troops. After the war, Burns continues to climb to fame. He becomes a massively successful radio entertainer and movie star, calling himself the Arkansas Traveler. He tells homespun tales about his Ozark roots, featuring made-up characters such as Uncle Fudd and Aunt Duty. His life changes drastically except for one thing, the freaking bazooka. The strange instrument becomes almost synonymous with his character, which explains what happens next. At the beginning of World War II, the Army was testing a new anti-tank gun called the M1A1. Like many weapons, it's been born out of necessity. Prior to the war, the military had developed a new anti-tank grenade called the M10. The only problem was it weighed 3.5 pounds, which made it difficult to throw or launch from a rifle. So they handed it over to Army Colonel Leslie Skinner, who in turn handed it over to Lieutenant Edward Uhl, who charged him with figuring out how to launch the damn thing, which is exactly what he did. As Uhl would later recount to Time Magazine, I was walking by the scrap pile, and there was a tube that happened to be the same size as the grenade that we were turning into a rocket. And I said, that's the answer. Put the tube on a soldier's shoulder with the rocket inside, and away it goes. And so, the M1A1 rocket launcher was born, making it one of the first generation rocket-propelled anti-tank weapons used in infantry combat. But there still was one final improvement to be made. While testing it at the Aberdeen Proving Ground, troops noticed something about the shape of this new weapon. It reminded them a lot of Bob Burns' wacky instrument. And so they began referring to it as the bazooka. The name has stuck ever since. What's your favorite bit of weaponry history? Let us know in the comments and be sure to check out Rated Red Snapchat Discover Channel for more strange heartland history. I'm Brian Kilmeade.